so excited to be here tonight for Women's Midweek. I know this is probably our favorite time to just come together as women. And like Jenna mentioned in the beginning, we're in for a special treat tonight. We're doing things a little differently. We got to switch it up every once in a while, you know, keep everyone on their toes. But I'm going to be preaching a very short lesson. And then afterwards, we're going to break up into different D groups. And um, we're going to split apart and have a time to confess. And I've um, selected some of the Bible talk leaders and some of the sisters to be able to lead some of these groups for us tonight. And it was interesting because I was thinking back to you my first night of atonement as a college student. And I feel like I have the most embarrassing stories from my baby disciple days, but... You guys are so open with me, so I shall be open with you. But I remember it was in um, one of our dorm rooms, in the living room. <clears throat> it was about like 20 women and I. And we were just sitting in a circle. You know, they shared scriptures about what it means to confess your sin. And everyone was going around. And I, my strength was not vulnerability. It's something that I've grown in a lot, but it was not my strength. So the whole time, like, my heart is just pounding. Because I'm so consumed with what they're going to think about me as I confess my sin. Um, if they're going to love me, if they're going to judge me, they're going to remember this, they're going to hold it against me. All these thoughts are going through my head. And so everyone is sharing very, very vulnerably. And then it gets to me. And, you know, I share the things that I'm like, hey, man, you know, I share it. But the, the one that had me most broken and made me feel the most shame, and I'm very dramatic. And so it comes to the last thing that I have on my list to share. And I go, and I, <laughs> Regine Francois, <laughs> struggle with impure thoughts. And then everyone looks at me like, welcome, welcome to the kingdom, you know, welcome to humanity. But it was a moment that I always remembered because there was so much acceptance. There was so much love. There was so much camaraderie because at the end of the day, these women were really trying to help me get closer to God, you know, and it just forever changed my perspective. Like it really is a time of refreshment. It really is a time of bonding. And so I'm excited that we're going to experience that tonight together. Please turn with me to Proverbs 28, and the word atonement is not often used. I don't know many people walking around talking about atonement, but what it means is doing what it takes to reconcile, okay? And so we know that Jesus paid the price for all of our sins on the cross, and so what he left behind was his word of what it looks like to reconcile ourselves to him to have a relationship with God. And so we know in Acts 2, it talks about repentance and baptism for the forgiveness of our sins. But as disciples, it's not just you confess once, you repent once, and then you're good. But it's continuing to live in that place of confession so that we can continually repent even after what Jesus has said. And so in Proverbs 28, verse 13, the Bible reads, whoever conceals their sins does not prosper, but the one who confesses and renounces them finds mercy. And I love that, that there's so much hope and God's constantly finding ways to give us more and more grace and more and more mercy. And he specifically says here, if we conceal it, if we hide it, we won't prosper. And part of that is because we feel that baggage. We feel the weight. We feel the guilt of what we've done. And it's hard to really move on and to give our hearts where we are with that weight on our shoulders. And if you think about Genesis, Adam and Eve, they tried to hide their sin from God. And what did it lead them to? Hiding from God. Why? Because they felt so much shame. You know, God doesn't want us to feel shame when we come before him. You know, that should be the last thing that we feel. We should feel openness and acceptance and a deep drive to be able to, to get there. And so it says that when we confess and renounce, we do get to prosper. And the word confess means to disclose one's fault. 
So it's specifically to unburden your sin or the state of your conscience to God. It's an unburdening. It's letting it go. But then to renounce means to reject and to stop using or to stop consuming. It's to refuse to abide in a state or to continue to do something any longer. And if you turn with me to 1 John 1, we're just going to look at a couple of scriptures here. In 1 John 1, give me an amen when you guys are there. Amen. Okay, I still hear some pages flipping, turning. Amen. It's like a call and response. Amen, amen, amen. amen. In 1 John 1, verse 5 through 10, the Bible reads, This is the message we have heard from him and declare to you. God is light. In him there is no darkness at all. If we claim to have fellowship with him and yet walk in the darkness, we lie and do not live out the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus, his son, purifies us from all sin. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Yet if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. If we claim we have not sinned, we make him out to be a liar, and his word is not in us. And I love this scripture because it talks about how holy God is. It says, God is light, and in him there is no darkness at all. Isn't that amazing that something and someone so pure will still dwell in us and give us a part of his Holy Spirit, despite what we've done and despite who we are? That's how much God loves us. And he says that he knows we mess up. And so he doesn't expect us to never mess up. But he expects us not to lie about messing up. And so the only time we stay in darkness is when we don't say it. Isn't that powerful? It's not like when you say it and you feel shame about it being out there. No, you're in the light. You confessed it. But it's when you don't say anything to be able to tell God, I didn't sin. It wasn't that bad. Your sacrifice on the cross didn't mean that much. It wasn't for me. Right? And I know I'm not looking at any woman who thinks that about God. You are grateful for God. I mean, you wouldn't be here at Women's Midweek tonight, right? If you weren't grateful for the sacrifice of God. But it's so amazing to be able to see what it is. Like, wow, like when we confess, we get to be in the light all over again. And it says that he will purify us from all sin. And so even being able to pick which part of the scripture you're in. Do you know what I mean by that? To find yourself in the scripture? If I sin and I don't say anything, where am I? If I confess my sin, even though I feel guilty, where am I? In the light. And so it's important to be able to know where we are because Satan is always tempting us to keep us in darkness. He's just like, oh, just change. You don't have to say it. But where are you still? In the darkness, right? And so we don't want to make God to be a liar. And one of my favorite scriptures is in Psalm 32, verse 5. For the sake of time, we're just going to reference it. But what it says is that when we confess our sins, God forgives us the guilt of our sin. And I love that scripture because a while ago, one of the sisters taught me that guilt is not a feeling. It's a state. And so if you killed someone, it does, I know, I know, extreme, extreme scenario, but you'll get the point. If you kill someone, It doesn't matter if you have the best alibi. Are you or are you not responsible for that death? But if you don't kill someone, it doesn't matter if you have blood splattered all over you. Are you guilty of that death? And so guilt is not a feeling. 
And so what's crazy is we can feel guilty, but it says that God not only forgives our sin, but he forgives us the guilt of it. We no longer even have to feel that because it's a state. We're literally in the light. That's how he views us, pure, blameless. And I love that about God. And we'll turn to one last scripture in James 5. I told you guys it'll be short. James 5. Give me an amen when you're there. Wow, that was beautiful. Sounded like a symphony. James 5, verse 16. The Bible reads, Therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. This is so incredible because what's the purpose of confessing to other people? To pray for them. So when someone shares their sin with you, it's not to look down on them. It's not to think, oh, I feel better about my Christianity. I haven't gone that far. But it's so that you can pray. They need you to pray. Why? Because in 2 Timothy 2, God says that he's the only one that grants repentance. We can't do it on our own. And our sisters need us to pray for them. And so even today, as we confess our sins to each other, we're going to close out with a time of prayer. To be able to pray for God to grant us repentance so that we can walk out refreshed like Jenna was preaching and her welcome. It should be times of refreshment that come because we're able to lay our burdens down to unburden ourselves with the weight, with the guilt of it, and be able to walk in the light and have true fellowship with one another as sisters. And so I just want to go to two quick points. Point number one, what not to confess. Point number one, what not to confess. Don't confess your feelings. Don't confess your stories. The Bible says with many words, with many words, sin is not absent. Okay, you can go straight to the point. Don't confess other people's sins. Well, she was so prideful and so I was prideful back. Just confess your own sin. They'll have their time with the Lord too. You know, but what to confess, point number two, is your actual sin. And put a Bible name on it. Sometimes we can confess, um, sometimes we can confess things like insecurity. Right? Insecurity is not in the Bible. What's the word for it? Pride. Pride. So you're confessing pride right? You can confess arrogance. You can confess conceit. Um, And something that helps me before I confess, I like to go to Galatians 5, verse 19 through 21. You'll find a sin list of commission. And then in 2 Timothy 3, verse 1 and 5, verse 1 through 5, you'll see another list. And so the first one is more outward sins. And then the 2 Timothy 3, you'll find more heart sins. And it keeps my heart sober-minded because sometimes I'll literally come to confess. I'm like, I feel like this week was a pretty good week. <laughs> I, feel like, I feel like I did pretty good, you know? And then I'll, I'll read the sin list and I'm like, oh, lack of love. Oh, yeah, that is a sin. That did hurt God. You know, he died for that too. And different things like that. And you should feel it as you're confessing, you know, like, oh, man, I hurt God. I hurt my relationship with God. You know, not feeling like, oh my gosh, like these sisters know, but oh my gosh, I hurt God after all that he's done for me, you know, and to be able to be in touch with the grace that he wants to grant you. And so that's my short little lesson for you guys today on the Night of Atonement. And at this time, I'm going to go through the different D groups. And I know we have some visitors with us. Please, 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 you're welcome to stay. Um, But we're going to split up into small groups, and everyone will go through and get a chance to confess their sin. And it's going to be incredible. 
Um, and what you can confess is any recent struggles which you've been going through this week, these past couple of weeks, or anything that you haven't confessed yet. You know, maybe it was from months ago or years ago to be able to confess that and lay it down so that we can walk out unburdened. Okay, and then at the end of our D groups, depending on the time, we're going to have a time of prayer. And so either we have enough time for every single person to pray a short prayer, not your quiet time prayer, just like a short little prayer, you know, or we'll just have one group prayer to be able to close this out. And then we're going to come back together at 9.15 and end up with one fired up song to just be able to be in tune with God's grace and his love and his mercy. Amen? Amen. Amen.